Okay, um, in this video I'm gonna do a problem as follows. Here's the problem, here's the problem statement. It's about bolts and finding factor of safety. Um, so we have a bolt assembly with six bolts. So we have uh, six bolts. And the stiffness of each each bolt is uh, each individual bolt is three uh, mega pound per inch, and then the stiffness of the members is twelve mega pound per inch per bolt. So, if you remember, um, what does that mean? It means this. When you say a bolt and members are going to be like in parallel, right? The springs in parallel. So, what this part says, it says that each, each bolt um, has this much like a stiffness and um, the stiffness of the member associated with each bolt is this much 12 mega pound per inch all right so we says uh, we have external load of um, 8 kilo pound uh, applied to the entire system entire joint so um, So let's say two, three, four, five, six. You have six bolts, and this external load is applied to all of them. So it's just like total load is 80 kilo pound applied to all. Um, assume the load is equally distributed. So force per load is gonna be per one bolt. It's going to be 80 divided by 6, right? A kilopound. Alright. Um, it has been determined that the, the bolts that they have used is U and C and with diameter of 1 half inch and is 13. So that 13 means uh, we have 13 uh, like pitches per inch. I'm sorry, 13 threads per inch. Okay, and it says that it's also uh, grade eight. We are going to use this information to find our to find our um, material properties, and it's roll is a roll thread. So it says how it was built okay so um, then it says that assuming that all bolts are preloaded to 75 percent of the proof load so the preload for each is 75 percent of uh, the proof load which is what a t times sp right Alright, so then it says that what would be a uh, factor of safety against yield, what would be factor of safety against over, you know, what is like overload factor of safety or load factor of safety, and determine the factor of safety based on joint separation, right? So we have formulas for that we are going to use and see how safe our design is. And then, this is from... Um, a problem, problem 829 from the, from the older book, but let's say uh, for that assembly joint, let's say the force is repeated, so it means that it's going to go to max 0, max 0, max 0, and we want to see if the force is like that, what would be the factor of safety for fatigue, so what is the fatigue factor of safety for the bolts? 
using the different criteria Goodman, Gerber and ASME okay so let's see how we can approach this problem first I uh, think let's go to um, to the table in our book and find the properties that we need for this type of bolt okay so I'm going up first of all okay let's see uh, for grade 8 when you say 8 say actually he's talking about uh, you see is this one uh, the grade is 8 so for grade 8 proof of strength is 120 so we're gonna write this down okay and then um, tensile strength is 150 and like this is like SUT and yield is 130 okay so let me write this down here we are gonna need that so SP was 120 KSI SUT was 150 and SY was 130 right then what else let's see I'm gonna need also uh, AT like the diameter effective diameter at the thread right I'm gonna need that to uh, find our you see here the preload so uh, for that we have to go to a table and for UNC one half thirteen find that AT that we are looking for okay so let's go up and see where that table was so where the table was let me I believe it was above this oh yeah when I started talking about bolts it was table uh, not this one Yeah, we could find it. Was it here? Mm, hexagon? No. Okay, let me go up. Oh yeah, here. So it's table A2. If you come here, you see my size is one half. Uh, the thread, the bolt was one half, let me see, uh, one half and 13, and it was UNC. So, UNC, look at UNC series here. Um, half an inch uh, major diameter was, right? It's gonna be this one, right? 0.5 is the more major diameter, and I have 13 threads per inch so this is what um, the bolt this is my bolt so um, what is the tensile strength area 80 and minor diameter threads per inch and you know this is for fine series so this is what I'm gonna need um, this area 1 point 0 0.1419 right so I need to write that down here too uh, okay, let me see. One four uh, one nine one nine is my inch square. Okay, all right. So um, we need to find the preload and also the fraction of the load, external load that's gonna go on the bolt, right, on each bolt. So to do that, <coughs> the problem statement was saying that 75% preload is 75% of, uh, you know, proof of strength, right? So, mm, so what was proof of strength? AT times SP, right? So 75% of 
1419 times SP which is 120 and then I'm gonna get this is KSI this is in inch squared so I'm gonna have this in kilopound right so FI is gonna be 1277 kilopound okay so each bolt is gonna have this preload but on the other hand I have you know if you look at the you know let's say that I have like this joint like this and you have uh, one two yeah, six uh, bolts it says that the, we have an external load applied here and uh, each of them are gonna take uh, you know even load countries gonna mean country you know uh, even contribution to this external load so that means that each bolt is gonna get as I said one eighth of that external load so the external load I'm gonna show that um, okay so yeah the external total external load was how much was 80 kilopound right so 80 divided by 6 I'm gonna have 13.3 KSI right so um, this goes to each bolt and the member that is uh, like in the neighborhood of that bolt make sense so we are at, um, so that what does that mean means that this 80 pound uh, will be divided to six and then each bolt and then the members around it are going to take this uh, I'm sorry this is actually kilopound uh, this force so how much of this force is going to go to the bolt how much is that going to go to the member we have to find it by finding c right so c was like load fraction for the bolt if you remember in from lecture is actually kb divided by kb plus km so for this problem kb is given to me is 3 and km is 12 right so if you remember I told you that typically C is around 20% right if it's not given um, the good design is the one that has like you can assume it's like 20% look at here so it's gonna be 12 thir 13 divided by 15 so it's gonna be 0.2 my C right so this 80 pound I'm sorry 80 kilo pound is gonna be divided to among those six bolts and this 13.3 kilo pound will be carried by each bolt and the member around it okay so this C tells me that out of that 13 kilo pound uh, the force external force that's gonna go on the bolt is gonna be 0.2 percent of like 0.2 times this right so this means only 2.67 kilopound of the force is gonna be carried by the bolt that external load and then the member around each bolt is gonna get the remaining part right so that is gonna be 10.67 kilopound alright alright so this means that this is what I have now so each bolt you know total load on each bolt is what is this fraction of the uh, fraction of the external load plus FI right so what is FPB is 2.67 kilo pound that goes on that bolt and then preload is applied to all of those bolts too which was 70% of I'm sorry 75% of what I had here 
so it's 12.37 I have to add that here so the total load that each bolt is gonna take is gonna be 1544 uh, kilopath, right? Alright, so we are ready to f do first part of problem which is not fatigue it's like you have a permanent load so let me go to my notes and take a look at those formulas Let's see here go here actually so look at my notes okay so let's go down oh, this is the full fatigue come up where was it uh, yeah these are the equations I was looking for so you have it in your book too so factor of safety against yield we do that against the proof strength right that table I showed you has SY2 but we use for both SP SP is gonna make it more conservative okay so uh, factor of safety again um, yield is going to be SP times AT divided by FI plus CP I already found FI plus CP for you guys so and we have SP um, times AT too so we can find factor of safety against yield and for low overload factor or load factor NL the here is the formula SP times AT minus FI divided by CP so this is another measure for uh, for factor of safety you know to show me how safe my design is okay and then the last one is joint separation factor so this tells me how far we are from uh, joint separation that is another failure mode right so I have these formulas we just plug in numbers there and then find our you know find those factors of safety so let's see uh, all right so against yield we said that factor of safety again yield uh, is what is was uh, sp divided by at we already found that divided by uh, this total force right divided by area so um, it's like 15.44 divided by 80 again so I have all these numbers right so SP is uh, okay you can actually let me see uh, oh I'm sorry um, if I use force this is like force I don't need to have 80 here but you could say um, yeah you know factor of safety is also this SP divided by your stress applied to to the bolt right which is this this is my total load divided by 80 is going to give me a stress and then SP divided by that is going to give me factor of safety or if you can go with the force okay both are gonna are the same okay so SP is what is 120 and this one divided by 80 is what 1419 right so this is like kip this is inches squared so the units match if you did do this did calculate this you're gonna get 1.10 as your factor of safety for yield okay so here is what I have for that against yield 
against overload so over load uh, factor right as what is mm, this was the formula sp a t minus f i divided by c times p right <sighs> okay so all right so what I have here for um, SP is 120, this is 1419, and minus FI, the load, uh, preload was this. So let's look at units. Here is a KSI, here is inches squared, so I'm going to have KIP here. Divided by C, we found it 0.2, and P is like load applied to each bolt no I'm sorry uh, this is like P is like external load applied to the joint right we had AD applied to the entire joint which had 6 bolts but 13.3 is gonna go to each bolt and the member around it right around it so what is it gonna go here it's gonna go 13.3 right Do you remember when we discussed this formula was when we had P P was the external load applied to one joint a joint with one bolt right so if you have like external load like here this P was external load applied to one bolt and um, but for our case we had AD applied to six bolts so for one bolt it's going to be 13.3 so if you did calculate this you're going to find let me see here um, yeah okay 120 times 1419 minus 12.77 so I'm finding 1.6 1.6 so this is 1.6 against uh, overload or that was overload factor and then you have what last one was the uh, factor of safety for separation right so that one is equal to come here to here's the formula if i divide by p one minus c right oh so f i p one minus c okay so f i is what 12.77 divided by p is what for each joint is like this 1 minus 0.2 right so if you do this you're gonna find it 1.2 right so it looks like a, a yield is m closer to happen right uh, separation we have more safety and you know the other factor is even higher alright so this is uh, part A of this problem um, but part B says for this bolt assembly um, assuming that the force is like repeated find factor of safety against fatigue failure of the bolt right okay so let's see what happens um, repeated load it means that um, my load my external load is going like up and then to that like max load and then goes to zero and then it goes up and it goes to zero goes up and it goes to zero and then you want to find uh, factor of safety against uh, fatigue life like uh, fatigue failure so p minimum is zero p max is equal to like p like right 
and for each bolt okay how much was that force P the external load that is gonna go you know on each joint when I say joint on each bolt and the surrounding material this one was 13.3 kilopound right all right so let's look at the lecture and see what we had when we discussed fatigue failure right so in general this was the general case but for the repeated case repeated stress um, these are the equations I'm gonna need I need to find Sigma A right and Sigma is C times P this is like the load applied to the joint uh, right joint includes uh, one bolt and surrounding material around it right the force that is applied to each joint so we had 80 kilopound total force applied and we have six bolts so uh, one sixth of it is gonna go on and then sigma a you find it like this c was 0.2 and sigma m you find it like uh, again you see sigma m is basically um, your uh, cp divided by 2at which is your sigma a plus fa fi divided by 80 fi divided by 80 is like a stress that is always there because it's like comes from the pretension preload on the bolt the other part is the one that is going to fluctuate right so if i have c sigma a sigma m you put them into this equation using goodman and then you find factor of safety against infinite life okay so this is what i'm gonna need s e s u t um, sigma i sigma a s u t and again s e all right so first let's find our stress element and then i need to find s e also from tables too okay so sigma a was c p divided by 280 so c is 0.2 p is 13.3 divided by Two times 80 which is right so if we calculate this guys you're gonna get 9.39 ksi okay and sigma i is basically your pretension divided by 80 this is gonna give me 90 ksi okay sigma m was basically summation of these two guys so it's going to be 99.39 okay sorry okay all right so the formula for the factor of safety for infinite life using goodman is this formula right so let's plug in numbers there i don't have se yet i'm gonna find it okay so here I have uh, SUT minus, uh, this is SUT, I found it from table. And then here we have sigma i, which is 90. And then I have here again, uh, okay, here I should have, let me show the formula again to you guys. Uh, you know what, maybe I can take a snapshot and bring it over there then we don't have to go back and forth that slide okay so uh, SUT I know is 150 minus 90 Sigma A is what is 9.39 SUT is what is 150 plus SE here and SE here we need to find SE so for uh, bolts with that grade, grade 8, we had a table, 
let me see where the table was, okay here, yeah, okay, so what you see here is um, fully corrected endurance strength, so um, this is for rolled uh, with rolled tracks. This is what the problem was talking about, right? So um, for grade eight, uh, I have for this size range, which is my range falls within, you know, it was, it was half an inch. It falls within that range. Endurance and strength is 23.2, right? So. 23.2 here. So if you calculate this, guys, you're gonna get 0.85. Alright, so Goodman says, I don't have infinite life, right? So, uh, uh, but um, okay, I want to do now also the Gerber, okay, for Gerber, you, I, in my notes I said that you have to go to your book for it, uh, equation 846, 847 for ASME, so let's see 846, I have it here, you see here is the formula, so let me also capture this and take it over. Take it over there and see how I can find this. I'm not gonna need this anymore. So okay. So for Gerber, uh, if you remember, Goodman was more conservative than Gerber, if you recall. Okay. So in this equation. Uh, what I'm gonna get is this one divided by two times sigma a I have was 9.39 se is what 23.2 and then sut 150 then 150 squared plus four times of se again right and then I have Again, SE here plus sigma i, which was 90, if you remember, here, okay. And, okay, the radical ends here. And I have 150 squared, and then minus, minus 2 times of sigma i, again 90, and then times SE, again, so, if you did find this one, you're gonna get 1.32. So Gerber says we are actually, uh, we have infinite life. But Goodman says no. So we are like, uh, it's like marginal borderline area. Gerber is less conservative compared to Goodman and you can at least better with the experiments so like uh, less re you have like less reliability if you go with Gerber so if you want to design a good joint probably you want to have at least factor of safety of two or at least for all theories you know you want to see like um, that NF larger than one so you can do uh, ASME too but uh, you know, it's just plugging numbers into the formula. So, yeah, so this is how you uh, evaluate, like, uh, you know, uh, how to find factor of safety for fatigue and static loading, okay? So I hope you guys find this useful, um, alright? So let's stop.